understand that. We're going to open our, our Bibles in Mark, Mark 5. Mark 5 from verse 27 onwards. Mark chapter 5 verse 27 onwards says the following. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, If only I may touch his gar clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed from that affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? Amen? The brother can sit down. My brethren, this word is a word that is very well known of, from each one of us because it speaks about the exper experience of a woman that had an illness and for 12 years she fought with that infirmity she had already gone through several doctors the best that i can say uh, at, uh, at her time she had done every exam examination she had as for second opinion, third opinion, well, she had already spent a lot of money. She was trying to find a way for her to have an, a life that was normal, a life in which she could be closer to her family members, closer to the society, because that infirmity made her, uh, prevented her from living close to the, the society. She had to live isolated, set aside, separated. But now, she hears about Jesus. She hears the comments that Jesus was a man, a prophet, that whatever he passed by, people would receive cures, people would speak about him, people would, uh, people would speak, people would walk, people would, were fed, they would leave happy from that meeting. And when she hears about this, for sure, her heart was burning. When she hears that about those testimonies, the experiences of the people that had gone to Jesus, for sure she she had uh, built up a, spec a hope, uh, a desire to meet Jesus. So she went to meet Jesus, and we we live moments just like this. The world in which we live today, the people live like this. They are desperate, isolated, suffering, searching for solution to their problems. A few even spend everything that they have. They, they end up spending drugs, spend what they don't have, spend what they cannot spend now they begin to steal from their parents they they sell stuff that they have in order to get money in, in order to get a second a few seconds of joy 
of happiness. People live like this, desperate. But the church has a very important function in our days. God rose the church, God rose you, God took you away from the world, operated in your heart, transformed your life, made you into a new creature. It was not so you could just sit on a bench, uh, giving praise to the Lord, singing songs. No. God called you, God brought you here, God transformed your heart in order for you to be able to speak of the great power of God, so that you could be a witness so that you could express, so that we would be a vessel and an instrument in the hands of the Lord. And tonight God is giving you the means to do this. Tonight God is giving you a deliverance. God is, is taking from your lips everything that uh, ties you up, everything that holds you back, for sure. Uh, shyness, lack of knowledge, doesn't matter. God tonight is operating in this place and is giving you the means to go and preach the gospel. You go in proclaiming the coming of the Lord Jesus. You saying that the victory is in the word and it is in the blood of Jesus. The church used to do this at that time and that woman heard and many, many that need to hear that message, that this word, people today that don't want to hear anymore what brings joy to the heart, men need to hear a revealed word. The man who is living today, in our days, is not satisfied with just about anything. Man wants to have an experience with the Lord Jesus. And that woman, she didn't care uh, about the, the difficulties, the barriers. She didn't care that she was supposed to be isolated and hidden away. When she heard that Jesus was passing by, she went after Jesus. And there are people like this, people that are thirsty, people that are dying, people that are out there in need of hearing about Jesus because Jesus wants to bring them to the house of the Lord. And the Holy Spirit at this last hour is uh, has in hasty to, to bring these people here. So the church needs to be prepared to receive these people that the Holy Spirit is bringing. And she didn't care about the crowd. She went to Jesus. She said, I'm sorry here, I'm sorry there. And she passed by and she, she touched on the rim of Jesus' garment. And just by touching, she, she was able to receive her cure. How wonderful is that, isn't it? Glory to God. Because Jesus was there. The multitude the, it was not a barrier. The culture, the customs, or the disease was not a barrier for that woman to receive the cure. You know why? Because Jesus doesn't look to any of it. Jesus doesn't look to our situation. Jesus doesn't look to our bank account. Jesus doesn't look to what we have, materially speaking. But then he looks to us. He knows our heart. And if you are a person in need, a person that believes in Jesus, you will receive your blessing. You receive your victory because the church is victorious. The church is victorious. And Jesus didn't look to her situation. And Jesus now asks, who touched me? Because the woman, she received a cure and she was going away. And Jesus now, he asks, who touched me? And now when she presents herself, when she tells her situation, her life, and she narrates her story, Jesus gives her what she needs the most, which is salvation, that will lead to eternal life, is the cure of the soul. The cure of the body was this is the easiest, but she also received, because Jesus is love. Jesus is the one who understands. 
He is one who comprehends. He doesn't look to anything that might prevent us from coming to Him. And when she speaks and she tells her story, Jesus tells her, Daughter, your faith saved you. Saved you. Go in peace and be cured of your illness. At that moment, Jesus gives her the complete solution to her problem. And that's what God is doing in every service. God is curing man's soul. In every service, God is operating in the heart, in the nucleus, in the center of the problem, which is the lack of Jesus, which is the isolated, is to be away from God. So when man comes and touches Jesus, he touched the body of Jesus, he touched in, on what is eternal, he received the cure for his soul. And tonight, we are going to once again touch Jesus. The prayer does that. The prayer brings man closer to God. Prayer in Jesus make us, allow us to go to place that we could never have gone before. Prayer bring us to eternity. We pray to God in the name of Jesus. Allow us to uh, overcome the barriers and the obstacles and the trials. Because the prayer does this. It feeds. The prayer is uh, gives us life. And when we pray to the Lord, we're receiving life. That woman was losing blood. The loss of the blood is uh, the loss of life. But in Jesus, we receive the blood of Christ that was put out on that cross, which represent the, the Holy Spirit. And it's the Holy Spirit that makes us every day, every hour, every moment, every instant, allow us to touch Jesus. Because the Holy Spirit is what makes us uh, seek the Lord. And you who entered here tonight, it doesn't matter what barrier you may be facing. It doesn't matter if the crowd is in front of you. It doesn't matter if the culture is going against you. You go by faith. You're going to touch Jesus. You're going to touch Jesus and you see that from Him there will, there will come power. Life will come from Jesus. Not for this life here on earth, but it will lead us to eternal life. That's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to sing a song and you with your closed eyes, you're going to Pray to the Lord, place uh, your necessity, whatever is your problem, family problem, physical problem, spiritual, whatever the, your problem might be. God wants to resolve your problem tonight. You wait, you're going to taste the hope of the Lord. You, you feel the holiness of God and the sanctity of Jesus so that you may receive the grace of the Lord. Church will stand up, my brother.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Can continue playing. From the moment in which you place in your heart the desire to come to the service, God was already working in your behalf. From the moment in which you set a day aside to pray for the service, God was already listening to your prayer and the fact that you are here is because the Holy Spirit wants to operate deeply in your life, in your family. What is your problem? Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Glory to God. You leave this place renewed. You leave this place cured. You leave this place closer to the Lord. And this is what God has for you. That's what He has for us. Because the operation of God, it is efficient. God, when He ordains a victory, the, the victory is it's assured. When God operates, nobody can go against it. And that's what God is doing right now. We're going to finish the service. If you desire, you can kneel down wherever you are. If you desire a blessing, if not, you can remain standing. No problem. You can remain standing or kneel down. Because the Lord, He wants, um, throughout the remainder of the service, He wants to operate something that you need. We don't know it. But God knows. Hallelujah. Half voice. Você vai dar lugar a esse anjo. Foi enviado por Deus. E a missão dele é It was sent by God, and the mission of this angel is to touch your heart, touch your wound, touch on your sadness, your bitterness, and it's going to give a great victory. Glory to God. The ones who know have a voice.
Metilden. You nail down and it is not in vain. Because for you tonight, the heavens are open. The rim of my garment are passing by your heads. And they are removing any thought of, of death, of sadness, of discouragement. And I tell you that a double portion is being given to my people tonight to proceed on the walk. And to my servant, you asked me tonight if I'm making myself present in this place, and I tell you, you can feel my touch tonight because I'm washing your soul, bringing joy and bringing renewal. My church, uh, the fact that you came up to this church was not in vain. The table is ready. The banquet is plentiful. And there are many angels at this moment that are working on your behalf. It is true that some, until this moment, may have not, may have not enjoyed what, of what I have prepared. But at this moment, everyone is going to be renewed. You will leave this place filled with my spirit. You can rejoice with me, my children, because your God is a God from near. God that works in our behalf. Let's be the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. The church may stand up. Glory to God. Let's be the name of the Lord. Now we're going to have a word of adoration to the Lord. I want to praise you because you are faithful, Lord. We we'll praise you because you have touched our lives tonight. Because the promise that you have made and do not fail, Lord. We we'll praise you because you have fulfilled in our lives what you have desired from this eternity. We we'll praise you, Lord, for your presence, for your worship. We thank you for your touch. We praise the Lord because you have protect us from this evil world. We praise your name, Lord, for everything you have done in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus, and Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Lord, we want to praise your holy name, Lord, because your presence is real in this place. We praise the Lord because we're going to leave your house but we are not going to leave your presence. We ask, Lord, that your angels may be with us, breaking the other barriers that may we might face. And by faith, by faith, we are going to see victory in Jesus. Take us home in peace, Lord. Bless our family members, those that are not here. Bless the, or the, the rest of the members of, of your church, the ones that were not able to come to your house, Lord, visit them as well. We, this is the prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord, the Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolations of the Holy Spirit you pour out upon all of us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We want to thank those that visit us. If you desire uh, a prayer, if you still need something, or feel like you need to place in the presence of the Lord, if you need a prayer, we are here at your disposal. Our next service is going to be at 6 o'clock in the morning on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night at 7.30, Sunday morning at 10.30 in the morning, and Sunday night at 7.30. And I say, peace of the Lord to everyone.